Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Black and Gold Brothers Podcast. He is CJ in the 1980s Kazals and the, the Fat Gold Chain. Uh, I am Chad Brown with no, no chain shoe strings in them. My Walgreens readers over here. You know what I'm no saying? No shoe strings in them. I did not win them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Man, uh, our buffs are literally the talk of college football. Yeah. I got Oregon, Wisconsin this week. Ain't nobody talking about Oregon, Wisconsin. That's the number one team in the country. That's right. Everyone's and, and, talking and about the buff. Where's that game at? It's, it's in Wisconsin. So, and, and so that could, you know, I mean, I, I don't think Wisconsin got much, but it could be a, a good game, right? Wisconsin's uh, not as, what they once were, so I expect Oregon to whoop up on them. Um, but we shall see. The point is, to your point, they're the number one team in the country, and everyone's talking about the Buffs. Everyone's talking about the Buffs. Some of it's good. Some of it may not be so well received by Buffs fans, considering this conversation about Coach Prime possibly moving on to the NFL, Dallas Cowboys, Raiders, any team that needs a quarterback and a head coach suddenly is interested in Coach Prime. That brother ain't going nowhere. Prime love Boulder, man. I mean, I, th- I really do sense, feel, and everything, I, every indication I get is that. Great walk today. Beautiful campus, man. God, this campus is so beautiful. It's unbelievable. Why wouldn't you want to be a buff right now? And and that's never gonna stop, right, Chad? I mean, that come, that's part and parcel of who he is, uh, and how people can project onto him. What's the, what's the next best move? I think a lot of folks just overlook. It, it's, it's it's sad in a way how CU has become, in the eyes of many, not a destination place but a stepping stone place. Um, and I think that's a narrative that's happened probably within the last 20 years, Um, but it wasn't always that way. And I think we're entering kind of an old school phase of CU football where it is a destination place, not not a flyover or a a pass through spot. Uh, Speaking of Boulder, I gotta mention our sponsor, our new sponsor, going into the CU Athletic Hall of Fame, Pasta J. How about that, man? How about, but it, it, at first it sounds funny because we all remember the Dan Hawkins clip of thanking Pasta J and all that. Um, but Pasta J deserves to be in the CU Athletic Hall. No one has fed more CU athletes than that man right there. Um, his dedication to the program is unmatched. So uh, we're super stoked that Pasta J as a sponsor of Black and Gold Brothers podcast. Um, but it's also awesome that we get to bring him on as a sponsor the same night that he goes into the CU Athletic Hall of Fame. How about that, man? And, and, and I'm going to tell you, you're right. Jay has just been, I think he got here the same year I got here. I'm not mistaken, maybe a year before. But uh, he Pasta Jay's, if you haven't eaten there, listen, his food is even better than Chad's, if you can believe it. I know one's, <laughs> no one's food is better than Chad's. But that aside, you talk about a guy who really, really cares about the student athletes. I was the beneficiary of a guy with such a big heart and did so much beyond just uh, feeding, serving up delicious food. He's just a he. He's the kind of guy that you want to be in your corner. He, you want him in your foxhole. He's a true friend. I love him to death, and I can't. I love him to life, and I can't uh, be happy enough for him. Now, having said that, Chad, I got to share this story, man, because. And we'll get right to it. What you did the other day, man, you pulled something, man. That, uh... <laughs> Bro, hey, man, I couldn't stop laughing, man. And I was like, man, I got to get Chad back. I'm going to pick my shot. It ain't going to be today. Don't worry about it. Okay. So we're talking to X. We're talking to, we're talking to Jay yesterday, Pasta Jay, right? And, you know, Jay is eager, excited to be a sponsor of the show. He's excited about what Chad and I and you are doing. So in the middle of the conversation, we start talking about the Hall of Fame. Ah, shit. Here we go again. So Chad, the humble, kind, intelligent Chad, without asking, no one asked him or anything. He was like, yeah, Jay, you know, this is great. Two of the three of us are members of the CU Hall of Fame. Damn! So therefore, we have a brotherhood. And and I'm sitting here like, no, he didn't. Just <laughs> yes, I did. It wouldn't yes, stop. I did. And I'm like, no, this dude didn't just do this. Like, 
I'm, I'm right here, Chad. I'm on the call. <laughs> he was fully aware. He said, two of the three of us. <laughs> Bro, that was a hey, that was classic right there. But you know, you go, hey, you know, I, it, that's not where it ends. It's where it started. All right, you're gonna tag me back. I, I will be prepared for when when the time comes. Also, want to mention our other sponsor, Journey Spice. Uh, as always, turning CJ and I from good cooks to great cooks. Um, I will always be better than CJ, but uh, you know that just doesn't even need to be said. That's just Hall of understood. Fame football player, Hall of Fame. Cook. <laughs> I, mean, I guess I'm just. I don't know what I am, man. You got the gazelles and the fat gold chain, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just, a, I'm just a, a peasant living there in your is. world. There it is, bro. All right, uh, <laughs> all right. So, but lost in all the coach prime conversation going to the NFL, Cowboys, Raiders, wherever else, is really the Buffs now being a legitimate contender for the college football playoffs. Mm. We were hoping and wishing somehow a possibility for the Big 12 championship game would come up. Iowa State losing two in a row. Now the Buffs, if they went out, which seems to be the case with the schedule they got, uh, give themselves a great opportunity to play BYU in the Big 12 championship game and then into the college football playoffs. I mean, this season is unfolding. I'm sure if you were to sit down with Coach Prime, you would say this is exactly how I expect it to unfold. For me – this is far beyond what I thought they would be able to achieve in year two. Chad, I thought at the beginning of the season, seven or eight games, eight would be just tremendous. Eight and four would be tremendous. We're at what, seven and two now. Um, five and one or four and one in conference, one conference loss. Um, it, it, to your point, it exceeds all, it's ex already exceeded all expectations. But we don't we don't get to live in the preseason expectations anymore, right? I mean, the goalpost is moving based on what how the season unfolds. And so at this point, it seems like most Buffs fans would be unsatisfied if if the preseason prediction of eight and four comes to fruition. It's right there in front of us. It's right there in front of us. Went out, you're off to the college football playoffs. Who would have who would have thunk it, Chad, at the beginning of the season? You had us winning probably, what, four or five games, if my memory serves me correctly. Uh, but be that as it may, man, give or take a game, I don't know. But here we are. You're right. And so the expectations have been reset. And I think this program, uh, this team is on a trajectory to do something that is unprecedented. And the benefit that this program gets from that is, again, unprecedented. All right. 18 Wraith Buffs taking on a unranked Utah team. Um, this series has been incredibly one-sided. Utah has won the last seven, 11 of the last 12 games, but Utah comes in on a five-game losing streak. Won their first four games this season off to a great start. Most people have them ranked as a top 10 team nationally. Um, quarterback issues have certainly hamstrung them. Things are starting to fall apart here late in the season. Um, this is going to be an interesting matchup because I have a tremendous amount of respect for Kyle Whittingham. Yeah. And what he has done and that program that he has built in Salt Lake City, um, very different way than where, where than how the buffs are constructed. He doesn't have the swagger and marketing skill of Coach Prime. He's got to get two and three star recruits, but they are the development program where they turn those two and three star guys into four and five star guys by the time they get to senior year and they're ready to go into the NFL. Yeah. Here with the Denver Broncos, we got Devon Vele who went on a Mormon mission. So he's an older rookie coming to the NFL, but he's doing really well as a Broncos receiver, part of that Utah program. Um, we got uh, Luther Ellis, uh, former Denver Bronco. His son uh, was a part of that Utah program, lighting it up as a defensive end for the Denver Broncos. So that's two rookie Broncos coming in from that program, proving themselves on the field already this year. So that's that development part of that program that, even despite the five-game losing streak, the last three games have been one-score games for Utah. So this is going to be tougher in actuality than it looks on paper. Chad, you 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 are absolutely correct. And for the next two weeks, I'm scared. I, I have a fear, a, a latent fear in that regard. Both Kansas and Utah, and we'll talk about Kansas next week, are teams that's lost a lot of close games, right? Um, uh, certainly Utah, in my opinion, I don't want to say they got cheated. 
out of the, the victory against the undefeated BYU Cougars last week. But that's certainly a game that uh, I would say they should have won. And how the story and the narrative would be completely different if not for an unfortunate call. But here's an observation I'm going to make about the Utahs of the world. And Utah specifically, the University of Utah's football program. And you so accurately placed it in terms of a place that gets two and three and an occasional four maybe star um, athlete, student athlete. And uh, that staff has done a tremendous job in developing uh, players so that you have this stable model of consistency program. I have a suspicion that the new NCAA rules with the transfer portal and payola as part of the mix is going to have an adverse impact on the Utahs of the world because people aren't just hanging out to be developed as well as a program like CU or other programs can get there quick because of the ability to attract the top-notch player. And so that's a theory. It'll be interesting to see how it unfolds. It's not to take anything away from that uh, tremendous coaching staff and the, the job that Wingham has done there. But I think that's, I think things have changed a little bit, not in the favor of Utah moving forward. Your thought on that? I think it's an interesting take because Kyle yeah. Winningham's clearly going to have to reinvent his program to fit today's model of college football. Um, and part of that is evidenced by the, we've been talking about this defensive front for the Colorado Buffaloes. They lead the Big 12 in sacks with 29 sacks, which is awesome. But they're going against a Utah offensive line that's got a combined 297 starts. Are you kidding me? You don't get that number of starts unless you're that kind of program yeah. where you put guys on the field, you develop them, they grow within your program, and then you retain them within your program. I don't think two years from now, Utah is ever going to be able to put together an offensive line that has those kind of numbers. At some point, somebody's going to offer one of those kids more money to go to Michigan right. or to go to Ohio State or maybe even become a Colorado Buffalo. Um, so this – Chad, hold on. Oh, no, go ahead. I'm sorry, sorry for cutting you up. Man, that, this is such a Chadism right here. Where did you get that stat from, man? I mean, where did you get that from? Like, who the hell comes up with how many combined starts for the offensive line? 297 for the offensive line group. Where do you get this stuff from, man? You know, I do college football. I got, like I said, I got Oregon and Wisconsin this week. So in the course of doing my study, if I know the Buffs are playing Utah, well, let me let me jot that one down real quick because I know I got to present CJ with some facts because chances are you might come with some bull crap, but I got to correct you on a factual basis. <laughs> Hey, dog, trust me. I was not going to say there was 293 starts <laughs> for the offensive line. I, I was not coming with that number. So you <laughs> got to, but that's classic Chad, man. I mean, it's like, huh. But that speaks about the program and that speaks about how this program is built. And so I mean, if you were to contrast the number of starts for Utah's offensive line group versus the number of starts for this Buffs offensive line group, heck, we got Jordan Seaton. This week, this will be his 10th start. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And he's right. probably the best member of our offensive line. So, Bill, Chad, we probably have a combined 60 starts, maybe, with our starting offensive line. Maybe 60 or 70 yeah. around there. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that, that speaks to that. But I think to your to your question and to your point, Kyle Whittingham is going to have to reconfigure this. And will he do the Nick Saban and go, you know what? This era of ball just ain't right. for me. Right. Um, which would, you know, frankly be a bit of relief because I think he is such a good football coach. If he were to spend some time figuring out how his program can fit within this new era of college football, he's such a good football coach. Within a short period of time, he would find a way to be successful and they could be a thorn in the buff side in the Big 12 because they play clean for the most part. They play smart. They are physical. They are tough and they will run the ball on you. So these are all pillars of a good football program and a good football team. So. You know, we'll, we'll 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 see what happens down the road for Kyle Whittingham and the Utah Utes. Um, but when I bring up this offensive line stat versus what probably has been the most emergent part of the Buffs program, the defensive line, their ability to get pressure over the last couple of weeks, does that give you any concern or any pause? I mean, of course it does, right? I mean, they are what you said they are speaking of utah and so they're going to be tough they're going to be physical um 
you know, it gives me pause, Chad, and you know this about me well enough. Like, I'm going to project all the confidence in the world because I'm confident, and yet I'm aware of where the shortcomings could show up. And um, I'm growing more and more confident, confidence in this team every week because, one, they're finding ways to – different ways to win. They fast start, win. Slow start, win. Right? Give up a number of sacks, win. Give up no sacks or one sack, win. They find, they're finding ways to win, and so they develop this personality. Um, but to your point, are there areas that could be exploited by an, an experienced, albeit underperforming football program at this point? Absolutely. But I'm not losing any sleep over it, Chad. I can't afford to, man. No, yeah, yeah. So you don't want to lose your, your beauty sleep because you you need it all, my friend. <laughs> See how I flipped that one on you? All right. But to your point, to you're on your, fire this week, bro. You've been on fire this week, man. To your point. Every dog well, has his day, though. I just want you to know. Your I'm day. Is- I got thick skin. All right. The buffs are 11 and a half point favorite. So while I can talk about the starts and I can talk about the program and I can talk about the history of the matchup, this game is another one of those games where if we play to the standard, and this team does not spend too much time reading the headlines about itself and feeling too good about themselves, I completely expect the Buffs not just to win, but to win by two scores or more. Yeah. You know, it's funny, man, you say that, because on one hand, that's I would imagine the folks in Utah might be a little offended, right? That's, that is the ultimate sort of bulletin board material. They have no respect for you. Have they not... They have such short memories in Boulder. They don't remember what's happened 11 out of the last 12 times we've played them. They haven't remembered. Uh, they, they don't remember what's happened, what, the last seven times we've played them. Great. Mm-hmm. They they are, they are. think we're just some also rams. We just stepped out on the scene. They have no respect for it. That's one aspect of it. Having said that, I'm like you. I think this is a game where CU, again, ratchets it up just another level. And I am eager to see how this, like, where do we go from here? Last week was a sort of a threshold game. I was nervous about last week's game at Texas Tech coming off. They're coming off a big victory, riding high with that uh, uh, blowing uh, Iowa State's undefeated season. We handled business there. This game is, it's a little different, right? I don't think, I think Utah is either a team that's offended and they're going to come out fighting like cats and dogs or a team that's defeated, realizing that, that BYU, their intrastate rival, took a lot of gas out of them in a season that's been the, the most disappointing in over a decade for them. And it could be a team that's like, hey, man, we're looking towards, we're looking forward to, to what happens to, you know, the season being over post Thanksgiving. And so I don't know what team shows up this week from Utah, but whatever, whichever team shows up, I fully expect the Buffs to be prepared for. Well, the Buffs are saying all the right things publicly. Travis Hunter on his podcast talked about the Utah program. Uh, you know, we just seen Utah play close to BYU, and they, you know, they they, they top ranking our conference, so we know we can't play around with Utah. They they humble, they hungry, they ready, to, they got nothing to lose. So <laughs> they after everybody. They want to take everybody down. So we know we got to go out there and work and play. We can't overlook them. It's another team in our way from stopping us to get to our main goal. So we got to continue to work, continue to dominate, and play Colorado football. And then, Coach Prime, I'm not the only one with a tremendous amount of respect for Kyle Whittingham and what he's been able to accomplish in Utah. I respect the head coach that we're getting ready to go up against so darn much. It's unbelievable. He is uh, one of the pillars of – the Big 12, of course, he, he was like that with the Pac-12. He's a legend. He's a legend. He's a true legend. What he's done consistently um, in Utah is, is unbelievable. So I have not only respect but admiration for what he's accomplished, and I would just wish my career could be a portion of what he's accomplished and all the young men that he's sent on to – the NFL as well as uh, a better situation for themselves with the tools that he's instilled in them. But my hat's off to that whole staff and what they, they've accomplished over decades. It's, 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 yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I was just going to say, love how Prime gives it up. Every, every coach that he faces, every team that he faces, he just gives it up to the coach and staff. I think, 
in part, that's uh, that's sort of the prime magic. You know, he's kind of spreading some prime magic dust. And on the other hand, I think it is, and it's an acknowledgement and an appreciation for how difficult this job is and to be consistent at it. Um, a lot of times we as fans take it for granted, but having played the game, you know how how hard that is, especially when you've had some measure of success, uh, getting your guys up every year to uh, meet the challenge. That's special. And uh, certainly Kyle has been that. Yeah. And when I think about Coach Prime and his, you know, giving coaches their flowers, I think it's also a recognition on, on his own that this job is hard. Exactly. You know? And so each win is a monumental effort that you've got to somehow do it, let that one go by and then ramp it up all again. So when you are Coach Prime beginning to find some success and you look to the other sideline or you're watching tape on Utah and you go, wow, I know this is an off year for them. But that dude's been doing this for decades. You know, I had a chance to talk to Kyle Winningham a few times when I did Pac-12 games Mm -hmm. for Utah. You know, he has not missed a day working out in over 15 years. That's how tough he is as a human being. He has had surgery and either got up extra early or took some pain pills post-surgery to get a workout in. So if that is your head guy and he operates with that kind of mental toughness, you've got to assume your football team is also going to be quite mentally tough. You're absolutely right. Now, Chad, that's what he told you 15 years? Yes. And obviously you believed him. I mean, no reason not to, right? But I, I actually saw him working out before Utah played USC in the Pac-12 championship game a couple of years ago in Vegas. Mm-hmm. I was getting my workout in and I was like, hey, man, you need a spot. What you need? So, now, yes, now, I have seen this in action. Listen, and I, I wouldn't doubt him, right? I have no reason to doubt him. Who would doubt a man? If his man says it, he, he says it. He does. Now, if I were to tell you I worked out every day for the last 15 years, would you believe me? Of course not. Of course not. You, you, you want to know why I would know this, CJ? Because Kristen Brown, my lovely wife, does clothes for both of us. <laughs> so it don't take me very long to go into your account <laughs> And see your measurements change over time. Hey, I might, hey, I got some. I might have some gland issues, man. <laughs> you, you don't know what my situation is, but that don't mean I didn't work out. Come on, man. See, I, anyway, anyway, Chad. Hey, r- real quick before we move on. Yeah. Would you rock the Coach Prime onesie, camouflage onesie? You know, walking around North Cherry Creek, bro. No, you, man. No, that's. That's Coach Prime. That is all him. I, I, as much as I admire and respect what he's been able to do, I don't rock Coach Prime gear. I rock University of Colorado gear, I'm, and I'm much the same way, right? And and I, I will actually rock some Prime gear, but I'm I'm with you on that. It's it's about this right here. Yeah, um, yeah. And so I dig the folks who are into the Prime aspect, and I understand why they are. And we've talked about that on this podcast. If you want to hear more about, from what CJ and I think about the Coach Prime effect, definitely dive in some of our earlier shows. Um, it's just, I'm a Buffalo. I came to Colorado to be a Colorado Buffalo and I, again, value and respect what coach prime does, but I wear Buffalo gear and I'm not put on a onesie unless it's a Halloween costume. So that's just, we call it a onesie, but it's a jumpsuit, right? It's a jumpsuit. But having said that, you don't have to have it with prime or you can have C Brown. You can have just the jumpsuit with C Brown. No, 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 no jumpsuits for me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, because because if, if I gotta you know use the bathroom, I gotta unbutton all the top, and I get hot. What if I don't want to have a shirt underneath? All the things, man, it gets too complicated. Sorry, I asked. Sorry, too I asked. complicated. Sorry, I asked, bro. <laughs> all right, we got uh, some housekeeping to do, um, because post our podcast where we shouted out Warren Sapp, where we shouted out uh, Arden Walker, um, a lot of folks jumped on the social media. Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it nowadays, and gave us a hard time that why didn't we mention this guy? And why didn't we mention that guy? There are nine Colorado Buffaloes with two sacks or more. So B.J. Green, he's leading the bus with five sacks. He deserves it. All the other guys have got sacks. They deserve their flowers as well. But I think where we were most remiss is we did not mention the coaching staff. We mentioned Warren Sapp as if it was all solely responsible to him. Um, So uh, if you want to shout out some guys, this is your shot. If not, I can jump in and and take it. Well, no, I I think 
you you pretty much nailed it. I mean, obviously, Coach Livingston has done a tremendous job. Uh, I think Coach Mathis as, as well on that side. Yeah. Um, the the coach I can't remember his name. The coach who who's actually the D line coach, Vincent coach, Dancy. Dance exactly, man. I mean, this is uh, this staff has just been tremendous in the development of these guys. And of course, Warren Sapp is the is the big name. He's the Hall of Famer. He's going to get most of the attention. You're right. We were remiss and not uh, not shouting out the other guys who are responsible for it. So I appreciate you doing that. Another thing we uh, we learned, I think, Chad, uh, from last week's show is that indeed the pronunciation of that little flowery thing or corn thing that they were throwing on the field and up in the air down in Lubbock, Texas, is tortilla. Yeah, tortilla. We yeah. learned that, man. We had a, we had a response. Someone uh, shot us a note saying, yep, you know, Chad was right. It is a, there you go right there, tor T yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Not la. So I had to I had to send a, a broad text out to uh to all my homeboys. It's like, fellas, y'all gotta tighten this up, man. All right, X, you, you gotta put that back up. You gotta put that back up. So I need CJ to could you read the last paragraph, at least the first three words, the last paragraph for me, please. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh I will read this. Chad is correct. His Boom. California. Wait, wait a minute. I'm not that's not all of it. This yeah. California pronunciation of the word tortilla is accurate. Charles, since you're usually right, this shouldn't be a surprise. After all, you're human. Thank you so much for granting me humanity. Maybe it's time to lose your Detroit, Michigan pronunciation of the word. Listen, I'm a product of the environment I'm from, although I did suggest that it was tortilla, but I don't know if I was 100% sure because back at the crib, I didn't say the word much, but it looked like tortilla. Those are two L's, right? <laughs> 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 nice. The Kawhi laugh is always classic. All right, man. It is uh, Kristen Brown's birthday. I'm about to take her out for a delicious Happy meal. Birthday, Kristen. Take care of our girl, which you've known since her, in, what, gosh, 1989. That's when she right, showed up man. on campus, that's when I met her as well. Kristen um, and my ex-wife were, were classmates, good friends, the whole yes. deal, man. And so... Yeah. Oh, yeah. We all grew up together, Chad. We did. We did. Uh, but we got to give our prediction and our score before we break out. Uh, what's your call for this one? Woo! You know, I think I think Utah's going to come out early and, and, and fight and claw and scratch their butts off. But we'll realize, much like Texas Tech, at some point, they're outmatched by an offense in particular that can score – when they decide to pull it together and score, they're scoring. And a defense that I still think is a little bit under – underappreciated, underrecognized. I think they turn it all the way up. Young quarterback, not a great deal of experience. I look for CU to really make something, uh, make a splash this week. I'm going with 38-17. Okay, I'm 35-17. I thought that well before you threw your score out. Bus put up a a number of points. Uh, Utah comes out and shows a lot of fight early. Then they realize, you know, it's just not going to happen for them. Uh, this matchup between the experienced offensive line for Utah versus the emerging and better performing week in and week out defensive front for Colorado. Colorado takes that one over later as well. The second half becomes a sack fest. Um, I'm saying at least six, possibly nine sacks up front for Colorado because Whoa. the best offense is going to get the lead. And Utah is going to be forced to pass the ball. They're not going to be able to withstand the gauntlet. Again, nine buffs with two or more sacks. So Amazing. you just can't just block B.J. Green. Yes. It's going to be someone else rolling in every other play after that. I got the buffs with the big win, beating the spread of 11 and a half, both for both of us tonight. I like it, man. Hey, man. Yeah. Rock you a onesie, man. You should get you a onesie. Take take Mrs. Brown out to dinner on a birthday, man, with a, a C. Brown onesie, man. I can see the camouflage, the camo. You be the talk of the town, bro. <sighs> I've also got, you know, a weird camouflage issue. My pops was in the Marines. Um, I don't like playing soldier because there's real soldiers. So just, you know, my little soapbox moment on that. You can do you, but for me, that's how I roll. Uh, I'm not, my kids wore camo. My wife wore it. I didn't ban it in my house. It's not some stance I'm willing to end my marriage over. Um, but for me, I, I don't do it. That's just me. That's just me. Boring. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is it for CJ and I on Black and Gold Brothers Podcast. We will see you guys early next week when we're talking about another Buffs victory. 
the Buffs hopefully move up in the rankings. I'm not sure what the matchups are of the 17 teams in front of them, but I'd imagine a couple of those will lose and fall down. The Buffs will slide up. This dream of the Buffs and the college football playoff grows ever closer every week. And yes, Jay, it's actually going to be in about uh, 50 minutes. Pasta Jay will be inducted up in Boulder to the Hall of Fame. Maybe one day you'll make it, CJ. I was going to say, how many minutes do you think I, I, I have to wait? Uh, you know, I went and saw Neil deGrasse Tyson. He was talking about the incalculability of really big numbers. So I would say I would put that in the same category. If it's just difficult to understand once the number gets so big, how many minutes? I need to start. I need to start picking my. I can't choose with my family. I'm a family is family. I could I could pick my friends. I need to do a better job. Yeah. <laughs> we got a shout out. And then Rosa from Journey Spice. Again, they make CJ and I and everyone who uses their spice mix an absolute better cook. That's it for Black and Gold Brothers Podcast. We'll see you guys next time. Have fun, bro.